covered in the last couple of video tutorials we've covered predictability of performance of a company we've covered earnings per share and the price earnings ratio and we talked about how the price earnings ratio and the uh, earnings per share relates to the market price and so now what we're going to do is we're going to value a company and it's going to be based on your desired rate of return alright so you've done all of your research okay you've identified a company that you want to invest in you looked at their income statement you looked at their balance sheet you found that they're consistently increasing in sales and profit you reviewed the industry that they're involved in you see that the industry has a ton of growth it doesn't seem like it's it's um, it's going to be obsolete in the near future you look at the balance sheet and you see that they have a lot of assets more assets than debt or more assets than liabilities you see that it's little debt and then you've performed the applicable ratios uh, specific to that company's industry and you see that everything is pretty much normal nothing's out of the ordinary in addition what you have done is you found the earnings per share uh, you looked at the income statement and you reviewed it for the last five to ten years and you found out that the earnings per share has been increasing by an average of 10 percent each year for the last ten years um, and last year's earnings per share was a dollar per share so since you know the average that the earnings per share is going to increase uh, each year then you can reasonably reasonably predict predict based on past performance that the earnings per share will be a dollar and ten cents and the reason the way that we got that is because we looked at the last year's uh, the last year's earnings per share which was a dollar and we multiplied it by uh, 1.1 um, and we also we took it a step further and we calculated it the um, annual rate of return for the next five years and at the end of five years we've concluded that the earnings per share will be around one dollar and sixty one cents so here's a chart here of the company's projected performance or projected earnings per share uh, starting with this year and it would be a dollar and ten cents uh, for year one year two a dollar and twenty one cents year three a dollar and thirty three cents year four a dollar and forty six cents year five a dollar and sixty one cents and what you see um, is that I'm basically multiplying the last year's earnings per share by a multiple of one point um, one um, and if you guys want to talk to uh, cover the percentages, if you have any questions on how I'm coming up with 1.1, just email me. Right now, I'm just assuming that you understand uh, percentages. I'm assuming that. But if you do not understand uh, percentages, just email me, and I will probably add a supplement in uh, to cover um, percentages. Alright, so you also determine that the average P ratio is twenty-six dollars. Or I mean not twenty-six dollars. You determine that the P E ratio is twenty-six, okay? And so you reach so basically from this information we can now project the actual stock price. Because remember, earnings per share times the price earnings ratio gives us the market price of the share of the uh, of the stock so based on the information based on our projections of uh, earnings per share of a dollar and sixty one and a P ratio of twenty six we come up with forty one dollars per share after five years and basically if the stock is currently trading at a price lower than forty one dollars then it is a good buy 
However, if the stock is trading at a price higher than $41, at this point in time, it may not be such a good buy. So let's look at your desired rate of return, which is going to totally... Um, we, we we found a market price what the what the future market price is but now what we want to find out is is what is that future value worth right now what is the present value of the future market price and let's get into it number one one thing that you need to understand is that the price that you pay for something determines your rate of return Okay, and the lower the price that you pay for something, then the higher your rate of return. So, in the last example, what we looked at is that we determined that the market uh, price, the projected market price, was forty-one dollars per share. Well, if I pay thirty dollars for the um, thirty dollars for the share right now then my rate of return will be lower than if I paid $15 uh, for that stock right now. So that's what I mean by the lower the lower that you pay for something, the lower the price that you pay for something, the higher your rate of return. And your desired rate of return is entirely up to you. Okay, It's up to you uh, to decide how much you want to earn. Some people they they just keep it conservative. They say, "Hey, I just want to maintain a five percent interest rate on my money. That's all I want. I want to get an annual return of five percent." Some people want a fifteen percent return on their money. Some people say, "I want a two percent return on on my money." It's all up to you, and your desired rate of return helps us to come up with a price that you're willing to pay to get involved in a certain investment so from the earlier example um, we predicted that the stock price will be forty one dollars in year five and right now the market price is currently twenty dollars per share so basically if you were to buy at twenty dollars per share you will potentially have gained um, twenty one dollars per share after five years so you've basically doubled your money in five years and from my calculations I got that this particular um, using these particular numbers the annual rate of return is about fifteen percent it's about fits it's a little over fifteen percent however from your desired rate of return uh, you place a value on this company. So we see that the, what the market is saying. The market is saying it is worth twenty dollars right now. So basically, uh, if we were to put the numbers together for what you minimum minimally want to earn, which is ten percent, from the earlier example, we we said that. Let's go back. Let's go back. You said we said that we wanted to get a 10% rate of return on our investments. Okay, so based on earning 10% annually on all our investments, from the earlier example, you are only willing to pay $25 for that stock that has a future value of $41 in five years. So basically, if the stock is trading higher then what you're willing to pay then you do not buy and if the stock is trading lower than what you are willing to pay then you might want to purchase more shares so let's go back here and look at this right now the stock is trading at twenty dollars per share which is significantly lower It's five dollars lower than what you value what you're willing to pay for that stock right now okay Based on you only willing to pay $25 for that stock that has a potential future value of $41 in five years, if it's $20 right now, then this may be a good time for you to buy that particular stock. Alright, so in summary, in order to place a value on a company, you need to determine if the performance is reasonably predictable. 
you need to find out the earnings per share for the last five to ten years and determine the percent of increase or decrease for earnings per share each year and take an average and from this you can accurately or reasonably, reasonably predict the future earnings per share thirdly you want to find the average PE ratio for the company and based on this average PE ratio along with the projected earnings per share you can reasonably gauge the future market value of a company finally um, you want to determine your rate of return the amount of money that you want to earn on any investment that you take part in and from your desired rate of re return you will be able to set a price that you are willing to pay for a particular stock.